tradition, excellence. These are just some of the words associated with Newcastle High School football in the Red Hurricane historic tradition which started in 1899. Two coaches stand out, Bill Breidenball and Lindy Laurel. Lindy, who was born June 23, 1921, explains how his love for football started in junior high. Around 1935, Mahoney and I didn't have a football team. A gentleman by the name of Austin Camero came down there, and he became like a, a father to us. And we wanted a football team. Well, they didn't have any money or anything of that sort. So uh, I got my dad's uh, Model T truck after we talked it over and so forth. We called Mr. Bridenbaugh up. and. Uh, he agreed to give us all of the old uniforms they had stored under the old cement stand. It was a big vault there. Well, we went up there, and we got the shoes. They had convex, uh, convex uh, cleats. Uh, they must have been uniforms from 1890. They were ripped, dirty, but we took enough to, for the number of kids who were going to come out. Took them home, our mothers sewed the pants, the shirts up, the shoes, if they were too big, we put paper in front to adjust to the size of the foot. And that's how we started out. That's how we played. And nobody worried about this. They just were hungry enough to want to play. They didn't give a damn if they even had a uniform. And in those days, you had leather helmets, no face guards. No, nothing. Lindy gained widespread recognition for his play against Paul Brown's Maslin, Ohio team, who Newcastle defeated in 1937, ending their 28-game winning streak. When I was a sophomore, I threw the touchdown pass and beat Paul Brown, who at that time was coaching Maslin, Ohio. They had a big streak, 32-42 game streak. And I threw a touchdown pass and broke that streak. And we beat him at Maslin. Lindy always had a knack for football and eventually played for the University of Alabama in 1941 for only one semester before enlisting in the military, but chose to go to Roosevelt Military Academy to get bigger before eventually going to play for the Crimson Tide. I went to a military prep school in Chicago, Illinois. The guy who was running it, he and I happened to be in the Army together. So I got a scholarship there, went there. Then I came home and I got a scholarship to Alabama. Now I went to Alabama, could have went to other places, but I went to Alabama. As a kid, you read all about the, if you're interested in football. They went to the Rose Bowl more than any other college league because they didn't have the Big Ten pack then. So I figured once out of four years, they're going to hit that place, mm -hmm. and I'll be there. Well, I only stayed uh, one semester down Bama, and then I enlisted, and after four years, but I was in a Floridian hotel in Florida having a drink on New Year's Day. It was either 44 or 43, and there, there were there wasn't anybody around. It was New Year's Day, they were all home. So I'm a, have a drink and I've got it halfway to my mouth. The radio blares out, the Crimson Tide, Pasadena, California. I, got, I went like that and I threw right to the ceiling. The bartender said, Lieutenant, he says, what's wrong? I says, well, it's a long story. I says, but all I can tell you is the train pulled into the station, and I wasn't even on a caboose. Lindy was named the Newcastle head coach just five years after Bryden Ball retired. Lindy said he can never be compared to his mentor, Bryden Ball, who in over 30 years won 10 WPIAL championships, but said Bryden Ball taught him a lot, especially 28 power. Well, that became rather famous actually throughout the United States. 
it was just it's an off tackle play, and uh, we just made it a dangerous play that the other team had to uh, put enough people in the, in that spot to try to stop us. And actually, oh, well, you know, once in a while they stopped us, but actually nobody did. Lindy Laurel was a tough coach, Newcastle Athletic Director Sam Flores says. Although Lindy was tough, Lindy's repetition and practice prepared the team for game. Lindy was tough as a coach. Lindy, um, we always used to say we were scared, scared to play. You know, we played scared, and that's how he wanted you to play, because that's how he instilled his, uh, he instilled his practices around that. You know, he he was a very tough guy. I mean, he uh, his conditioning was repetitious of plays. I mean, he didn't, he wasn't much of a guy with the weights and stuff like that. And I know that the era has changed, but he got, he whipped you into shape by just making you run plays after plays after plays. You know, and Lindy was just, a, you know, I'll say this a million times, he was a tough guy, but he got all you can get out of you. Six undefeated teams, three WPIAL championships coming in 1967, 1973, and 1975. Flora explains it's not all the success that made Lindy a legend, it's the fond memories he had playing under him. It was the strike year in 1981. We're down in Beaver Falls, and we're playing Beaver Falls, and it wasn't a very good half. And Coach Laurel was in a neck brace that year. He had something wrong with his neck. So uh, Coach Bonjavinga, which is our coach right now, was the quarterback. And uh, I always had a bad habit. I'd put the, I'd have, I'd put the a medicine bag right in front of the doors. He's swinging doors. I don't know why I always would just do something stupid like that. It wasn't meaningful. It was just we we're always in a hurry getting things done. And Coach uh, slips over the bag and he comes flying through the doors. And Coach Bonjavinga gets up out of his seat, grabs him under his arm, and he said, Coach. Don't worry, we'll get those guys. In Lindy's tenure, he noticed there was one thing which made a great athlete, and it wasn't always talent. Tradition. But you have to have somebody to have the same feelings and so forth to keep it up or bring it on and remind. You know, because we watch TVs, so forth, it's all propaganda. They keep pounding you, pounding you. Pretty soon you go, no, no. Pretty soon you start going, yeah. Yeah, they, they make you believe because of the pounding. Mm -hmm. You're in that business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one time I was playing with the Chicago Cardinals. And we were invited to the Buick Open in Chicago. And we were, after we were sitting eating there, and I asked one of the best sports writers in the country. I says, hey, Bob, I want to ask you something. I says, you write up our games. And we watch films by the hours. The game we play, we watched last year's against them, you know, they, and both teams do the same thing. I says, but what, what game are you watching? He said to me, Lindy, he says, you got to feed the people manure. Then he said, you got to keep feeding them manure. Feed them. He says, pretty soon, no matter what you say, they believe you. And it's so true in our whole environment. Even though the basics of the game are similar to when it started, Lenny said football's changed over the years, and not just the rules. What's the difference in people? It, well, there was a different, different than uh, day and night. People helped each other. They talked to each other. They didn't have TVs, they didn't want to be bothered. They didn't have computers. They didn't have all this, you know, cell phones. They, they needed some company to talk to, friends. And if somebody got sick, everybody went there to help. Somebody died, the whole block would be there, bringing food for a week, see? But now, no way in hell is it even close, see? People who want to be on their own, they don't want to be bothered. And uh, back in them days, nobody had much money, but they had friends. See? You could leave uh, milk and never lock your door during the Depression. Nobody would come in and steal it. See? And whenever help was needed, the whole town would come and block. 
In Lindy's historic career, he won 220 games while only losing 104. In 1987, Newcastle became the only institution in the country to claim two coaches with 200 victories. Lindy says the atmosphere in Taggart Stadium was like going to heaven. Well, I'll tell you then, nobody was allowed in this stadium. No track team, they couldn't even throw a javelin on that grass. <laughs> With old man Bradenbaugh. Oh, yeah. See? So the only time you came here, when you played, and the only time you were in that field was on Thursday nights under the lights. He'd put on a game uniform, and boy, it was like going to heaven. A legend in Newcastle, Lindy retired in 1992. Lindy says he is honored to be adored by thousands of people. He also says his faith kept him going throughout his years of coaching. Well, I'd be a phony if I didn't feel very gratified about it uh, and honored by it. And I thank God. I always stay close to God, too. Before every game, where I just always stop. In, at the church for about three or four minutes. And I never asked God to win. I just asked God, let me do my best. And I think, whether it be football or anything, I think that's what most people have to do or should do. Because then they, they lead a, a better life. They feel better because they know they're close to him. You know, but well, that's pretty hard today. Everybody chases money. After his retirement, Lindy hasn't moved away or stayed out of football at Newcastle. Lindy can be seen at virtually every practice and game, reaching out to many generations. Lindy will always be remembered, not only for his accomplishments on the field, but his love and compassion for others off the field as well, making him the real meaning of tradition.